Can an anonymous 911 tip provide enough reason to stop a person? Hey guys, my name is Anthony Bandiero, attorney and senior legal instructor for Blue to Go Law Enforcement Training, bringing to the roadside chat. All right, so let's dive into this. So the, 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 the scenario is pretty simple. I get it all the time. Anthony, we have a caller, 911. They don't want to get involved. They don't want to sign a witness statement, uh, sign a citation, or they don't even want to give their information. They don't want to give their name, right? Can we use that information to detain a person for criminal activity? And the answer is yes, if you can prove two things, okay? Number one is, why should you trust this person, right? Do they have an indicia, an indicator of reliability? Now, when people call 911, traditionally, can you find out who they are, right? Are they truly anonymous in the typical sense? And the answer is no, right? When people call 911, can they really hide their subscriber info if they're calling from their cell phone? And the answer is no. So that is why you are able to trust them a little bit more than a true anonymous tipster. And we get that reasoning from a very famous U.S. Supreme Court case called Neverett versus California 2014. So here, a lady called 911 and basically wanted to remain anonymous. OK, that's that's at least that's the argument. And she was reporting this potentially drunk driver. So here's a synopsis from the case. Right. Assuming that the motorist 911 emergency call reporting that a pickup truck had run her off the road was anonymous. Her tip was sufficiently reliable for the purpose of, of reasonable suspicion for a traffic stop of the pickup truck. And here's what the court said. Number one is, are they truly anonymous? Right? The answer is no. Now, if you have a truly anonymous tip, let's say the person's calling from a pay phone, if those still exist, or they're calling from uh, a phone in the lobby of a hotel, you, you don't know who that person is. They're saying, I don't want to identify myself. I don't want to get involved, but this is what's going on. Flick, if you have one of those people, then the rules are a little different. You're going to have to corroborate their story, which means you're going to have to show some that they had inside information, right? Inside baseball, something that the general public would not know. Okay, so the person calling from their cell phone, though, traditionally is not truly anonymous. So can we believe them? So this lady never read. She said, hey, uh, he, he ran me off the road. It happened like it happened recently, right? It wasn't like the next day. It's her calling, not somebody else, not a third party. So it, it, it's like the telephone game. The more people you tell, the, the more watered down the facts get. Um, she's, you know, also describing the truck with some pretty good clarity. So can we trust her? Yes. The second question is, OK, what is the information that she's giving you that is, that kind of tends to prove that there's a legal activity going on, right? Here, it's pretty easy. She's basically claiming that the person is, um, you know, drunk driving, right? That is the illegal activity. Compare that to the person who calls up and says, hey, I was at Walmart. And while this guy was grabbing his off-brand bag of Cheerios, you know, like the cheap brands, they don't put it in boxes, they put it in bags, you know what I mean? And as he was grabbing his off-brand bag of Cheerios, I saw the muzzle of a gun. And, you know, th that's what the caller's saying, whether this person is wants to remain anonymous or wants to be known. Should you actually detain that person? Well, the answer is going to be no in most states, right? Because in most states, the a person can have a concealed weapons uh, permit, right? It's a shell issue. Well, actually, every every state is shell issue now, um, even though they don't they don't like it based off the Bruin case. But the point is, imagine you're doing this. You're um, you you get this call in Texas. Should a Texas cop go out and detain that person uh, for suspicion of carrying a concealed weapon um, against the law, right? The answer is no. First of all, Texas is constitutional carry, so you need a permit, unless the person's like, you know, looks underage, right? Under 18 or something like that. But you don't want to also stereotype people. Oh, it's, but Anthony, what if it's a high crime area? No. In fact, maybe it's the high crime areas where people, lawful people, should be carrying weapons. The point is, what is the illegal activity? 
Normally, these 911 calls are about drunk drivers, right? So that's pretty easy. Okay, so to, to wrap it up, can a 911 call, especially even an, an anonymous 911 call, can that be used to stop somebody? The answer is yes. If you believe that they have reliability, to, you know, that you can identify them, push comes to shove, so that you could charge them with a false report to 911 if they were lying to you. The second thing is, all right, fine, we can trust them. What are they telling you that indicates that there's criminal activity, right? You put those two together, that gets you your stop. I will caution you a little pro tip, though. Sometimes cops will get this call over the radio about a potential drunk driver. They'll find the car soon thereafter, let's say 10 minutes. They decide to follow it for a while to see if they can build up their own PC. They don't see anything. Now they're thinking to themselves, well, can I still stop the car based off the 911 call? I would caution you on that because I think you're losing credibility. If you really believe that the person could be intoxicated, right, and dangerous, why are you waiting, right? I say pick one, either stop it or watch it. But you shouldn't do both. Okay, um, well, watch it and find your own PC. That'd be fine. All right, guys. Hey, if this video has helped you get it right every single time, hit the like button. Subscribe to the channel. Share with your friends. That's all I ask. Okay, guys? And until next time, my friends, stay safe.